All right, guys, I'm here today to talk to you about power supplies. Now, the reason I'm talking to you about power supplies is because I'm gonna teach you guys how to build computers. Uh, to stop the never-ending amount of overflowing inboxes questions that I have on a daily basis, I'm gonna do a series on building a computer, and it's gonna start with case and PCU, or PSU, sorry, power supply unit. Then we're gonna do uh, CPUs and hard drives and installing video cards, motherboards, cable management. We're gonna take it all the way from beginner computers all the way to water cooling, top of the line stuff, uh, you know, the entire, uh, whatever you want to call it, cornucopia of things. As you can see here, I have a cornucopia of ridiculous power supplies. You're starting with little tiny 250 waters that are, I can't believe there's a power supply in here, uh, going up to 350s, 550s, 850s, and this is a big dog. This is a 1350. This is going to go in our, uh, in our big gaming build that we're going to do for you guys soon. So, uh, when you're choosing a power supply, there's a lot of things to consider. There's a lot of stuff that a lot of people don't know. Now, obviously, if you're an enthusiast and an overclocker and a gamer and all this kind of stuff, you already know all this. So this is more for regular folk like you and me that just don't maybe don't know everything about computers. Um, so let's talk about choosing a PSU. Like, what do you need? Which one makes, how do you decide what do you need? Uh, let's start off with watts. As you can tell, I told you, this is a 250. So what's a 250 gonna run? It's gonna run a motherboard, a CPU, one hard drive, and that's about it. Uh, if you're running a fast computer, a 250's probably not gonna cut it for you. This is gonna be the smallest that you should ever, ever get. This is the minimum I ever recommend, and even then, it's almost too small. What's really good about these is these are good for micro ATX systems, really light systems, uh, atom processor systems, stuff like that. This is really good. It's small, it's efficient, you don't need more, and they're very, very affordable. Now, I'll move you guys on up to something like this. This is gonna be your basic computer. This is gonna be uh, you know, a CPU, a hard drive, a DVD-ROM, burning stuff, internet, nothing really too crazy. Uh, 350 watts is gonna be more than enough, and plenty of amperage on the 12 volt rail is gonna be enough for you to do whatever you want. Now, if you're gonna be getting a video card or making a gaming system even with a small video card, then you wanna start thinking about going a little bit higher. 400, 450, et cetera. Now, most of the higher end video cards, 8800 GTs and 9800 GTXs and all that, they require 450 and up, sometimes 500 and up. So here is a nice little 550 watt from BFG. This is gonna be what, I I'd say about 50% of people are gonna get if you're building your own system. You're gonna be in about the 500 watt range. So, uh, you know, you, there's a lot of things to consider. You always gotta look up watts, uh, what type of motherboard you have, what type of connections it has, and then you gotta think about the future. Am I gonna add a second video card in the future? Does it have that connector for the extra video card in the future? Does it have enough wattage and amperage for that second video card in the future? These are the things you gotta think about. So, if you definitely are gonna go SLI or Crossfire or Crossfire X, then you start stepping into power supplies like this one. This is an 800 water from OCZ. So this is a really nice high-end power supply. It has tons of PCI Express connectors. It has tons of all extra correct uh, connectors for peripherals and CD-ROM drives and extra hard drives. It's got all this stuff because they know the people that's gonna be using an 800 watt power supply are probably gonna have a RAID 0 array for their operating system with two hard drives, a RAID 1 array uh, for storage with two hard drives, probably two DVD burners, probably a video card, or maybe two plus a very powerful uh, dual or quad core processor. So this is gonna be for people like that. Now, from this 850, it keeps going up. You get you know, 900, 1000, and then you make it to something like this. So, who's gonna use this? Well, I'll tell you what, just about nobody. The only people are gonna use this are really, really high-end game builders, uh, computer builders. If you're building triple SLI with 280 GTXs, if you're, uh, you know, doing anything really crazy like that, water cooling, this is the, gonna be the power supply you're gonna wanna get. This will run three 280 GTXs with one power supply, and those things take a lot of power. You can run three 8800 Ultras, you can run just about anything with something like this. Uh, literally, you could probably run about four to six hard drives, a, power, a, power, a motherboard, CPU, three video cards, two DVD burners, all that stuff, uh, you know, a TV tuner, everything. So if your computer's fully loaded up, if every expansion slot is taken, this is what you're gonna be using. Uh, now, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna unwrap this one. I'm gonna open this one up so I can show you the connectors. Uh, so a lot of people don't really know uh, what connectors are for what, and I wanna educate you. I want you guys to know what you need to look for when you're buying your PSU and uh, exactly what connectors you need. All right, now, looking at this, this is the motherboard connector. This is the main power connector that goes to your motherboard, okay? So this is a 24 pin. Now, when you're buying a power supply, keep in mind there's 20 pins and there's 24 pins, and you need to get the right one. A lot of the mid-range ones actually are gonna be a 20 plus a four, so the last four will break apart uh, on a little clip, and you can use it for either a 20 or a 24 pin motherboard. So keep that in mind. Moving on to another connection, see this right here? This 
if you can take a look at that, this is a six pin PCI Express connector. So this is what you're gonna do to hook up your video cards. Now, if you take a look at, let's see, this video card, this is a 280 GTX, sorry. This is the six pin PCI Express connector that goes right there. Now, most video cards have this six, P PCI, uh, six pin PCI Express connector. A few though have this one. This is only for the biggest and baddest video cards. This is the eight pin PCI Express connector. Uh, so, you know, just keep in mind that you're probably gonna wanna have one or two of these if you're gonna build building a gaming system so that you have uh, the ability to upgrade and get a second one. Let's move on to the next one. This is your four pin. See this four pin connector? This is your 12 volt four pin connector for your motherboard. This is another one that goes right on the motherboard. Okay, so this is gonna be your four pin, moving right along. These little skinny ones right here, these are your SATA connectors. So these are gonna connect to your SATA hard drives, your SATA DVD ROMs, etc. And as you notice, they're stacked, usually right on top of each other. This is so you can hook two of them up right there connected to each other, you know, how they are on your case. All right, so as you can see, this is a modular power supply. Let's talk about modular power supplies. What a modular power supply is, is one where you don't only have this huge ponytail of cables coming out, you actually have extras that you can add on here. What's good about this is that if you're not using it, it doesn't have to be coming out. That way you don't have cables hanging out the bottom, you get to do your cable management nice and clean, keep it elegant, and that also will improve the airflow of the case, which will let everything run cooler, and if you're serious, it'll let you overclock further, etc., etc. stuff down the line. So, on this one you can see I have a bunch of uh, six pin PCI Express and the eight pin PCI Expresses to add on, but if I don't need to use them, I don't have to have anything plugged in there. Now the only thing that I'm missing uh, as far as connectors go is Molex connectors. These are the four pin Molex connectors. These look really, really cool because they're on this high end power supply. Most of the time they're like this little clear uh, plastic, but you can tell they're the biggest four pins that you're gonna ever find. And they're four pins across, not in a square. So these are what you're gonna do to hook up your old hard drives, your older uh, IDE hard drives, and your older IDE DVD ROMs. Uh, so now you're fully educated on pins and all the pins that are out there and available and what to do with them. So now what I'm going to show you, Lance, if you just scoot over here a little bit, is how to install one. This is actually a really, really nice silver stone case. Now, installing a power supply is the simplest thing in the world. You start by taking off the case. Very simple. Uh, take off the outer, uh, you know, the, the case and pretty much uh, there's two places where they can go. Some of them go on the top and some go on the bottom. So usually most of them are in the top, so they would go right here, up here in this section. But on this one, which is a high-end case, it goes on the bottom. So I'm gonna show you how to install it on this one. If you're gonna install one on a case that has it on the top, it's the same thing. In the end, what I'm gonna show you right now, there's not really much to do, but I'm pretty much gonna slide it in here, and there's four screws that go on the back. That's it. So when people are afraid of installing stuff on their computer and they just don't know, you know, they don't wanna do it, they wanna go buy a Dell or something, don't do it, there's no reason. You don't have to do that. Just you know, build it yourself, it's really simple, and uh, I'll show you how right now. All right, so the first thing you need to do when you're gonna install the power supply is get everything that you need. What will you need? You will need four screws that come with the power supply, you will need a screwdriver, and your mitts. Now, this is really simple. I have nothing to tell you. Here's the steps. Step one, slide it into position. Step two, screw the screws in. There's no step three. Turn it on, it's ready to go. So, watch. I'm going to, actually this is upside down, make sure you put it in. Here's another thing I actually, I kind of forgot, but your fans, they want to face the right direction. There's 120 millimeter fans, there's 90s, there's 140s. This one is gonna suck from the bottom and it's gonna blow out the back. So, I'm gonna put it with the fan facing down. That's it. All right, step two. That's it. It's as simple as that. Power supply installed, nice case. I'm pretty much done. Now, normally I'd tell you to send me questions, but there shouldn't be any questions. And if you have questions, I guess send them to me anyway, but this is super simple, don't be afraid. If you're gonna build a computer, don't be afraid. Look, it's done, and I'll tell you what, you wanna see one more little hint before I go. Uh, a lot of cases let you take the other side off. If you wanna make your cable management look nice, duck all these lines behind the motherboard tray. Uh, what that'll let you do is just let them duck out the appropriate distance. So you can put them through here, and then to get to your motherboard, it goes through here, and it just plugs into the other side. So that's a really good way to keep things nice and clean in your system, since it might have a clear case, it might look good. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you.